Hello everyone. Hey boys and girls. It's Miss Judy and Mr. Harry. It's Good Friday. Today is April the 10th, 2020. Um, we talked last week about Good Friday and when Jesus was crucified and how he rose again from the dead on Sunday morning, which is Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. We have a lot of things going on. I talked to you before about the sash on the cross that's now been changed from purple to black for Good Friday and then it'll be changed again on Sunday morning um, for Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He died on the cross to save us from of our sins and then he was resurrected from the dead so that we may have eternal life. Some of you may wonder how we set the date for Easter because some years it's in March, some years it's in April, and it changes. So I'm going to show you my calendar over here. And I may have told you this last year. Do you all realize that we've been having CA groups for two years now? This is our two-year anniversary. But the way we determine Easter is you find the first day of spring. Okay, and spring starts right here, March the 19th. And then you find the first full moon after the first day of spring. And that was just last Tuesday night. You may have gone out with your family to look at it. It was called a pink moon, a super moon wasn't really pink, but it was really big and bright and beautiful. So that first full moon after the first day of spring, and then we come to the first Sunday after the full moon after the first day of spring, and that is when Easter Sunday is determined to be, and that will be on the 12th this year. And tonight is Good Friday, April the 10th, okay? You guys know, know I love you and you know I miss you, but you don't realize how much I need you. Um, if you watch the video from last week, I left out part of our scripture verse. I don't know how I did that, but I know if you, all of you kids were here, you would be telling me, Miss Judy, Miss Judy, you left that out. So, let's do our pledge, motto, and scripture. And... I have a little paper here in case I forget something. Okay, everybody stand. Attention, salute, pledge. As a member of Children in Action, I will pray for missions, I will give to missions, learn about missions, and do missions through the power of Christ. Children in Action motto, send me. Children in Action scripture verse. I can do everything by the power of Christ. He gives me strength. And that's Philippians 4.13. Okay. Now let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful day. We want to thank you for your son Jesus. We want to thank you for his resurrection to save us of our sins and give us eternal life. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen. We'll start out this week's lesson. We're still studying the Middle East. Um, we talked about this last week, Mr. Harry. We've got our countries over here in the Middle East, how it spans three continents, Africa, Europe, and Asia. We've got Egypt, we've got Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, Cyprus, Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Oman, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and I put Afghanistan over here. It's not considered a Middle Eastern country, but I have a little something I want to share with you from a person who went to Afghanistan. 
but you've got your Middle East countries here. You can see on the big map where they are. This is where we are in North America. And then if we were to come across the Atlantic Ocean and through the Mediterranean Sea and right in this center part would be our Middle Eastern countries. Okay? And you can see that on our globe here also. Got the big globe out. You've got North America, South America, and then Europe. Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Okay. I want to start off where I left out last time with a little something to read to you about faith. Faith is believing in God, trusting His Word, and knowing Him through His Son, Jesus. Christians in the Middle East face many hardships for their faith. They are rejected by unbelieving family and friends. They often lose their homes, possessions, and jobs. They fear being thrown in prison or even killed. Christians in the Middle East have extraordinary faith that God will take care of them. They pursue a relationship with Him despite the hardships they face for their faith. Okay, so they have an incredible faith. I talked to Miss Karen last night and asked her about your activity sheets and you should be getting those in the mail probably Monday or Tuesday. Okay, they're a little bit late going out, but that's okay. So, one of the sheets you'll be doing is called Beep Beep, Time for a Tour. And we talked about our missionaries last week. Those were Don and Mary Allen. And this is a game you can play at home with your um, brothers and sisters or your parents or whoever you're staying with during this coronavirus time while we're all in quarantine and all staying home. But it has some interesting facts about the Middle East. It says you'll notice that many Muslim women wear scarves on their heads called hijabs, H-I-J-A-B. Okay, they usually wear shirts with long sleeves and slacks or long skirts when they leave the house. So they dress very modestly. They cover their, their head, their, most of their face except for their eyes, and they have long sleeves and long skirts. When you go to the supermarket, you'll see foods very much like you would find in our supermarkets here. Lots of cooking spices are available, like cumin. I showed you the spices last week. Cardamom is another spice. You'll also see yogurt, olives, eggplant, and pita bread. And then you've got a boy here that's playing soccer, and it's one of their favorite games. You've got, it says older boys and girls love their phones, very much like our people here, if they can afford to have one. And you will hear the church bells ringing and also the prayer, the call to prayer from the muezzin, um, from the mosque. The mosque is like their church. And welcome to the Allen home. I'm glad you can stay for dinner. Now, she's going to give us a tour of her city, but she doesn't tell us what city she lives in or even what country she lives in because they're in an area where they would be persecuted if people knew they were missionaries, but one thing she did want you to know is her little car, you can see that right here, was purchased with money that was received from the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. So you never know when you put your coins in your little pail for Lottie Moon where they're going to be spent and how they're going to help our different missionaries from around the world. Our next activity says, what if you go for it and the going gets tough? Okay? She tells us that in countries where it is illegal to change one's faith, to convert from Muslim to Christianity, new believers from Muslim backgrounds must work through the fear issue, when to be bold and when to be silent. They face loneliness, sometimes loss of jobs or community. 
On a positive note, these folks take the decision to follow Jesus very seriously, for they have to consider the cost. Now, if you will notice, I have added a few new badges to my vest. Right here is Unshakable Pursuit, and the next one is Caring for God's Creation. Unshakable Pursuit, you'll hear a lot of in this lesson. Um, caring for God's creation, we had intended to have your birdhouses ready so you could hang those in the spring. Well, spring is here, spring is sprung, and we need to hang those birdhouses and get our badge for caring for God's creation. The story I'm going to read to you about Christians in the Middle East who face tough times when they decided to become Christians. It's about a man named Ahmad and a girl named Amina. As a young man living in the Middle East, Ahmad was interested in meeting Americans. An American family shared with him their faith in Jesus. After several years of hearing about Jesus, Ahmad decided to become a Christian. But then things changed. Ahmad was fired from his job when his boss found out that he followed Jesus. In fact, he lost job after job because of his faith. He tried telling some men about Jesus and they beat him up. Being a Christian was tough, but Ahmad knew that God was with him. Ahmad got married and he kept telling his family about Jesus. Ahmad was unshakable in his faith. Soon, Ahmad's wife decided to become a Christian, and so did his mother and father. After some time, Ahmad's mother became ill, but just before she died, she asked Ahmad to bring her some Bibles, and she gave a Bible to each of her children and said, This is the truth. You should believe it. Ahmad is still unshakable in his faith. Okay, and the next story is about Amina. When Amina was a little girl in the Middle East, she first heard about Jesus when her father listened to some Christian radio programs. Some of you might listen to K-Love or some preachers on the radio or music, Christian music, gospel music. She heard about Jesus again when an American nurse visited her mother and again after she was grown when a Christian in a restaurant witnessed to her. Finally, Amina believed what she had heard, and she decided to become a Christian. Some Christian women helped Amina to learn more about her new faith. Then came the day she told her family about her decision, but they did not think she was serious. They told her it was just a passing fancy and thought she would change her mind. That was ten years ago, and Amina has still not changed her mind. She is unshakable in her faith. But Amina's life has been tough. Only one other person in her family, a nephew, has decided to follow Jesus. Amina has been ill, she has lived through a war, and she has lost a child in death. But Amina is still unshakable in her faith. Now, you have a place at the bottom where you can write a story that shares how you can be unshakable in your faith. You might not live in a country where it's against the law to become a Christian. You might not lose your family or your friends when you follow Jesus. Still, there may be things in your life that make it tough to follow Jesus. What is your story? Write it here, and it only give you a little bit of space. So if you need to use more paper, be, you can make your story as long or as short as you like. What can help you to be unshakable in your faith? Okay. There goes the fire truck. Goodness. All right. You have another activity, and I don't think we're going to send this one to you. But this one, you can find it on the website, which is wmu.com slash this month. 
You can find videos there. You can find different activities. WMU.com slash this month. And that will take you to some activities. But what this has is it has a code. And some of the symbols that go with the code are all things you would find in the Middle East. A camel, grapes, teapot, a Bible, olives, a pomegranate, a shish kebab, an almond, some kind of animal with long horns, not sure what that is, a fig, and looks like a game maybe. Okay, but these are obstacles that might be in your path. It says obstacles can sometimes get in the way of Christian of Christians having unshakable faith and use the code to find out what you can do when the going gets tough. Okay, so that would be a fun activity to do. Some obstacles you might f face would be maybe your friends make fun of you for going to church um, or someone might have told you the Bible wasn't true. You forget to say your prayers. Maybe you think, feel like you're too busy to read your Bible or your friends watch movies that show bad stuff in them. So those would be some obstacles that would need to be moved out of your way. Alright, and another thing we have is different prayer, prayer cards for the Middle East. And the very first one says, Pray for Don and Mary Allen and their friends to have unshakable faith. So there's that unshakable again. But there are a lot of prayers on here that we could share with our congregation. And I thought what we would do is similar to what we did last year, where we copied prayer requests. Last year we used missionary names. But we can use these prayer requests. We have another one that's prayer gifts. Pray for those who are the only believers in their families to have unshakable faith. And then you've got some scripture here from Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. But we could, could run, I ran those off on pretty brightly colored papers, pink, blue, green, and yellow. And we could cut those apart and put them in our Easter eggs and um, maybe give those out when we get back to church, whenever that may be. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you our Mission Mosaic magazine. And this is the magazine that the ladies at the church that are in the Women on Mission group that we get um, to do our lessons from. But you will see on the front a lady, a Muslim lady, that has her hijab on. And this is a scarf that covers her head and her neck. And sometimes the scarves actually come up over their mouth and nose. Okay? Yeah, the article is called Comfortable or Call Pursuing God in the Middle East. And I just highlighted a few things to share with you. And then I'll show you some of the pictures that they had of the Middle East. It says, Don and Mary have been in the Middle East for years and they've raised four adult children there. They're IMB, International Mission Board Missionaries. They visit neighbors and Middle Eastern friends who do not know the good news of Christ. Mary enjoys hiking in the mountains, camping at the beach, or enjoying a good book or a movie. Very much like we do. They live close enough to the mountains and to the beach. There's a lot of water around the Middle East. That She homeschooled the children until they were in high school and then they went to a boarding school. Part of the Allen's unshakable pursuit involves sharing their faith with those around them. Mary was born in a missionary family and accepted Christ when she was six years old. I know the Lord had given me the honor of growing up with and loving Arabs so I could reach out to them as an adult. 
They reach out to all kinds of people and it tells us about Ahmad and Amina that we just read about. God is at work bringing people from the Arab world into his kingdom. Some verses holding special meaning for the Allen family are Psalm 125, 2 and Matthew 5, 16. And I'll read those to you. God's love is impacting the lives of people in the Middle East, including refugees coming from war-torn countries like Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. Your gifts to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering and Baptist Global Response allow local pastors to minister in areas where refugees live. We can't go there and actually talk to these people, but there are things that we can do. We can pray. We can be aware of what's going on um, the Middle East, and we can give. We can give to our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. The Middle East is home to many unreached and unengaged people groups living in places where it is hard to send Christian workers. We pray for wisdom in finding Christians who can live among them. The Allens also ask that you remember their adult children in the United States and to pray for Southern Baptists to stay focused on missions. The mission field is wide open to Christian teachers, medical personnel, engineers and businessmen and businesswomen who can use their jobs to fulfill the Great Commission. There are more than 3,600 Southern Baptist Convention missionaries around the world. Okay. And a few other things. The importance of family and resulting values of respect, honor, and loyalty are a part of the Middle Eastern culture. Modesty in dress and action is a key component of daily life. Hospitality, that means welcoming visitors into their homes and offering food, water, and shelter. It's very important. And the Middle East is also home to three of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Okay. This is a mosaic, which is a traditional Middle Eastern craft. And down here you have these bazaars, which are like markets, um, maybe like a flea market or a, a street market. Um, they sell food, spices, fabrics, and a variety of souvenirs. This looks like spices, and I think these are probably mosaic bowls. And they have all kinds, of, you can tell these folks are probably tourists because they don't have all the traditional um, outfits like the other native people wear. This is the lighthouse at Alexandria. These are some cookies we could bake. The Middle Eastern people drink a lot of tea. This shows the people praying at the mosque. Here's some more vegetables at the market. This looks like spices here. You see the ladies in their head coverings and their long dresses. Camels, lots of camels in the Middle East and they're very big camels. Lots of deserts, sandy, hot. Here's some people praying here. Okay. scripture I'm going to share with you. One is from 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 24 through 26. So 2 Timothy is about halfway through the New Testament. Timothy was a friend of Paul's, the Apostle Paul, who was a big missionary. He did a lot of, founded a lot of churches. 24 to 26. 
and the Lord's servant, and we are the Lord's servants, okay, must not be quarrelsome. That means we shouldn't be fussing and arguing, but we should be kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, corrupting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance leading to a knowledge of the truth, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil after being captured by him to do his will. So that can apply to people serving on missions in um, countries overseas, and it can apply to things right here in our United States. Another favorite scripture of our missionaries was Matthew 5, 16. And it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And Psalm 125, verse 2. And you can get a picture in your head of this. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Okay. Think about that in terms of the coronavirus and all the things that are going on in the world today. But the Lord surrounds his people. All right. Diagram. On this side is the Middle East. Over here is the United States. Most of this I've already talked about. The Middle Eastern countries are in Asia, Africa, and Europe. The United States is in North America. The Middle East is mostly Muslims. The United States is mostly Christians. The words written in purple or some Middle Eastern words. The muezzin is the crier who calls the people to worship. We have church bells in some places that call us to worship. The mosque is their place of worship. We worship in a church. They pray five times a day. We pray as needed. They have a hijab for the ladies. It's a head covering. And we dress in Western attire, meaning that we're on the western part of the hemisphere. Not necessarily cowboys, but we have t-shirts, jeans, boots, those kind of things. We don't wear head coverings or long dresses normally. We have lo They have local street markets. We have grocery stores and farmers markets. Um, bazaars, or like I showed you the picture of, or like flea markets maybe, and missionaries served there from the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering, and in the United States, Annie Armstrong serves the North American Mission Board. The things in common, children love to play games and laugh. Everybody needs someone to care for them and listen to them. Some of our foods are the same, grapes, olives, dates, figs, yogurt, pita bread, pears, hummus, and some of our spices are the same. We've got some words on here, unshakable, and faith, and obstacles, and compassion. We should have compassion for other people, even though we don't always understand what they believe or how they believe. Okay. I've never been to the Middle East, and I doubt if any of us have been, but I got to thinking about some people that I know that have been there, and they didn't go as missionaries and they didn't go as tourists, but they went as a part of our military. They're in the Army or in the National Guard. So my friend Brittany, I talked to her, and I asked her what she could tell me from a soldier's perspective of what they saw when they were over there. And she told me that she served in Afghanistan, and that's right to the east of Iraq and Iran. Um, there were mountains there, and it was either extremely cold or extremely hot. And they had a rainy season, and they were flooded when she was there. She also served in Iraq and Kuwait. 
some of the soldiers that were with her, they went and were baptized in the Jordan River. She um, said, the Muslims, care. I asked her, I said, do they really pray five times a day? And she said, well, they carry these prayer mats with them, and then they pray throughout the day. But it's dry, it's hot, and it's sandy and dusty. And they have these outdoor markets, these flea markets, and she had pictures of them and pictures of the little children going around selling these beads and different things. And um, when we get back to church, she'll let us uh, share her pictures and the things she, she saw when she was over there. She said, you hardly ever see females, you never see the ladies, and if you do, you'll only see their eyes. And the camels are huge. The children, mostly boys, make bracelets and other jewelry, and they ask to take a photo with you. They love to take pictures of the American soldiers, but then they want you to give them money. She said, Ramadan is a fasting time, and the soldiers were told not to eat or drink in front of them. The children love soccer, and they love to play jump rope. And they have these jingle trucks, these, these great big trucks that transport um, items. And they have bell. I said, why do they call them jingle trucks? And she said, they have bells on them. And when they're going over this rough, rough terrain, uneven roads, the bells ring, and they call them jingle trucks. She said, it's very rude to look the people in their eyes. You don't make eye contact with them. You don't shake their hands. Um, it's also rude if they offer you food if you refuse to take it. She said, but they're not always real sanitary, not real clean, so, you know, you, you don't want to be rude and refuse to take what they offer you, but you don't want to get sick either. So no deodorant, so smelly, smelly people, flies everywhere. So the sandstorms are like tornadoes here. Okay, so those are just some things. I uh, thank Miss Brittany for her service to our country, and she's uh, called out now with the National Guard with the, where they're helping out with the, the COVID-19 virus everywhere, okay? And one more thing. Oh, in, I got in my mail today. Guess what I made? Recipes for children from around the world. Okay, and they have recipes from Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Middle East. Latin America, North America, and from the Middle East, we have a story, and then you have, let's see, recipes from Israel, Jordan, Lebanon, Yemen, Egypt. Israel, and the recipe that we had that we would have done would have been for the hummus, which was um, a chickpea dip that I showed you last week. Okay? All right. Let me do a look at our missionary kids' birthdays. And then we can close out. We're going to finish up our lesson on the Middle East um, and probably do, do a different unit next week. All right, last week we did Leanna Jones from Canada. Her birthday was April 2nd. Maggie Williams from Macedonia. This week we've got Benjamin White, his birthday will be on April the 16th. He's eight years, he will be eight years old and he's from Guatemala. And April 20th, we've got Ty Wagoner. He's 10 years old and he's from Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. His parents are church planning missionaries in Cincinnati. So, those are our missionary kids that have birthdays coming up for April. Close out in prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to spend with the children. Please keep everybody safe from the coronavirus. Help people to stay healthy and stay well, to follow the guidelines set, set out for us as far as staying in quarantine and staying at home or the home to work order, those kind of things. Lord, we pray for our missionaries throughout the world and in the United States. We pray for our mission kids. We pray for our church. We pray for our pastor and our deacons. We pray for our community. We pray for the lost. We pray for all of our CAs. We pray for Hollis and Wilson. We pray for Kiana, Natalie, Chloe, Emily H. and Emily B. Pray for Kel and Gracie. We pray for Caitlin, Wade, and James, Holly, Carrie Ann, and Camille. Lord, we thank you for this season and for your son who died on the cross to save us of our sins and for him, his resurrection and all that he's done for us and continues to do. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen.